please give a warm round of applause, make as much noise as possible, for Holly Manish. Or he couldn't be asked to do an introduction. That might also be the case. <laughs> he just wants to sit down. I have no idea how to follow that last poem at all. <laughs> but, um, so I'll just do a poem about my granny to try and change the tone. <laughs> this is, I wanted to do something slightly Christmassy because although other people might not do this, I normally put my Christmas tree up the day after fireworks night and I get very excited about it. Um, and this is a poem that I wrote at Christmas. I, I, um, I always go up to see to see my family in Scotland at Christmas and stay till, till Hogmanay normally. Um, and on Boxing Day, we all went round to my Auntie Jude's house and there was like, there's about four generations of family there. And my grandma at the time was 94. And, um, and she, she always sort of sat, since I can remember, sat on a chair in the corner, just watching all the great grandkids and all the um, kids and her, and her kids. Just, I don't know why I'm explaining it like that. But um, yeah, just watching everyone basically playing weird, weird party games, actually, that I thought all families played until I told my friends about them. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently other people don't play past the orange between you and your uncle's neck or um, the thing where you have a key on a long piece of string and you have to put it down your clothes and then up your... <laughs> I thought that was normal, but anyway, so... I mean, my family's pretty nice. I don't know why they like this game so much. I don't like to think about it. So, um, yeah, my grandma was sat in the corner watching all the family, and um, she started to cry. And I looked at her and I thought, my God, like, she's 94. It must be totally overwhelming to have this much family. It must be amazing, like, year on year, just having a bigger and bigger family. And I went over to her and I put my arm around her and I asked her if she was all right. And she whispered in my ear, I'm so fucking bored of Christmas. <laughs> so, I sort of realised what a stupid idiot I was, and I have no idea what it's like to, to get older and to be that old. So I, um, I wrote a poem for her and my other grandma called Bungalows and Biscuit Tins. My grandmas are officially old now, 94 and 86. They tell me war was not romantic, not a bit. Don't believe those posters of the handsome soldiers kissing loved ones who waited for them to come back. Most endings were not like that. Most loved ones died or loves burnt out. My grandmas go to more funerals than parties now it hurts, neither of them like this. And they sit, observing everything. Their Christmases as kids had sock stockings and a single bouncy ball. And I will watch them watching as great grandkids open hordes of presents throwing half onto the floor. Sometimes we disagree about what's right and wrong for us to do. My pregnancy without a wedding ring is something that we struggled through, talked it through and agreed to disagree. And though I felt a little shamed when she offered me her ring to wear, I knew she was just protecting me from how people would have been to her if she had done the same. The other took me to the side and held my waist tight like a glove. Loads of my generation got knocked up too, she whispered. We just kept it covered up and married very quickly. I love it when they wink at me, telling secrets, drinking tea. I ask about their history. They know a lot of things, my grands. They sit and watch it all. Articulate, intelligent, kind and bossy, shy sometimes as clocks tick time with ice in top and I watch as people stop to ask them if they want another cup of tea. 10,083 I've had, she says to me, they all taste just the bloody same. She says I'm bored of my friends dying and people are so patronising. Bending over, talking shyly, slowly and politely, over smiling like my grandmas are both kids. Telling me to leave now and she's just nattering for the sake of it. Call their conversations gossip like older people are all the same and ignore everything they thought before their brown hairs turn to silver grey if you ever call it lilac. I will slap you round the face, she says. <laughs> she says she wishes she could dance again, but I see her dancing all the time. And I love the fact me and my mum's mum tell dirty jokes my mum won't like. We watch reruns of CSI, the oldest says she's ready to die, younger siblings now all gone, funerals a daily song, the tea is sipped. My daughter loves the way they live, bungalows and secret tins of biscuits she nicks while my grandma sleeps. My youngest grandma does cherubics for the over 80s twice a week and lives a larger life than most people my age that I meet. 
I see lifelines run through both their faces. Both of them are saving graces. I think our country's strongly ageist. I wish more grandmas filled the pages of our youth-obsessing TV screens. You teach us what real wisdom means. And though there's things we argue on, and your mindsets can be militant, and you always say, I swear too much, I think you're fucking brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> This is one that I wrote, basically my grandma told me to write this, my younger grandma that does cherubics, um, which is, it's actually harder than I thought it would be, I was laughing about it, and then I went to a class and oh, it was quite hard. She, um, she said to me, we, we talk a, a lot about sex, like I don't always want to talk to her about sex, but she asks me a lot of questions about sex. Um, I've, got, I've got two aunties and my mum and she just bypasses all her daughters and just goes straight for me because apparently I've got some sort of slutty poems online and I don't mind talking about stuff like that. So she asks me a lot, a lot of questions. Um, last one was about whether blowjobs were a myth or if people actually did that because she just, <laughs> just didn't get it, basically. Um, and so this, she said to me she thought she was born in the wrong era and that um, she doesn't know what her personality would be like if she'd been born when I was born because she always saw like sex as a sin and she put it just on the same list as like doing the washing up, cooking for her husband because it was legally required. It was just one of the legal requirements of marriage and when she got married. Um, and she all said to me she never liked it. So she said I was in a really good position and I needed to think about all the things that turned me on because she, well, I asked her if I can tell people this. Um, but she said she's never had an orgasm and she knows she never will in her life and she just then um, thinks that that's a bit rubbish now. Um, which is a shame because she's got a very good power shower in her house, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably the best of all the people I know. So she told me to like make a list of things that turn me on and really think about it and embrace it a bit more than I was doing. Um, so this poem's about that and it's called Bricks because I um, have always been quite obsessed with bricks and when I was pregnant that became a massive craving to like try and lick buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you can all relate to this one. <laughs> My last one. No. Bricks turn me on sometimes. I don't know why, there's just something. When nobody's watching, sometimes I rub them. The roughness is lovely. I feel a bit funny even writing this down, but I love it. Bricks turn me on sometimes. When they're crumbly and old, cement chipped and derelict, I sometimes stand dreaming, staring at building site tips, wondering whether I could break that rubble into little bits in my hands and eat it. <laughs> I get the same feeling with ice. I don't know why, but the feeling of ice turns me on sometimes. When it's left till the end of a drink, just on the verge of water, so when I bite the ice cubes, they melt gently in my jaws. I like to eat ice when I'm bored. I like to eat ice before I sleep or after sex sometimes. When I go to bowling alleys, I prefer the slush puppies without the cherry flavouring, just the crushed up ice. Thighs turn me on sometimes. Guys turn me on sometimes. Eyes turn me on sometimes, but it depends how they're watching me. I like to eat ice before I eat. When it snows, I sometimes sneak handfuls of that instead. Eating snow turns me on sometimes. Low tones whispered in my ear. Hot baths when no one else is near. Shower power, water sprays. My friends say that's a common one. Sometimes I feel sexiest when I'm the only one around. Jumper sleeves, sitting halfway down a hand. Doing things unplanned, staring at the sky. The stars turn me on sometimes. As the size of this universe blows my mind and I need to get that energy out of my skin. When you touch me those nights, I start shivering. Whistling turns me on sometimes. Singing choir tones switched up so loud I feel like they're surrounding me. Music turns me on sometimes. Crying turns me on sometimes. Laughing turns me on sometimes. Wearing high heels turns me on sometimes. Wearing wellies turns me on sometimes. Wearing soft silky clothes. Talking with someone I don't really know. Watching your throat as you speak about something you know really well. Even if I could not care less. My head on your cold chest turns me on sometimes. When we're touching, and I fart accidentally, and we both start to laugh hysterically, and the sexy time moment has passed, and we were so very ready, and we joke about how can we recapture sexy after that has happened, that turns me on sometimes. <laughs> Just to specify, not that I need to, that is, I'm talking about fanny farts in that, but there was, there was not enough rhythm in the line to actually add that. Just, just to say, I'm not sure if the other type, if it would have the same effect on me. Anyway. <clears throat> 
trusting you completely turns me on sometimes. So does eating pizza, or any Italian food to be fair. Hands in my hair and bricks, crumbling derelict bricks. So when I flick on the TV, it confuses me. As the same men and women's faces and bodies parade the stage and sexiness is explained the same way, day after day after day. I think that sexiness is lame. I don't believe what you say. Sexiness is way more than those bodies, boobs and holes and dicks. Turn-ons are all different. I like ice and I love big crumbling bricks. Thank you. <laughs> Another round of applause, please, Ms. Holly Benish.